Do people scroll? Short answer, yes. Although people weren't used to scrolling in the mid-90s, nowadays it's absolutely natural to scroll. People are used to scrolling down the pages, but sometimes they don't do it. There are a few triggers that make people scroll, and in this video we will learn them. In one of the recent studies, Nielsen Norman Group found that users spent about 57% of their page viewing time above the fold. It proves that the content above the fold receives by far the highest share of a viewing time. The idea of the fold comes from the print world, where the fold means the top half of the newspaper. You can see this part without unfolding the paper. In digital design, the fold is what users see without scrolling through the page. More than 50% of users see only above the fold area and leave without scrolling. It happens because users don't scroll unless they have a reason to do so. Anytime the user has to scroll, they have to do an extra action that adds to their interaction cost. Of course, scrolling has a lower interaction cost than clicking, yet users should be motivated to scroll. Two factors impact scrolling behavior, and content is one of them. When users land on a page, they quickly assess what they see. They want to know whether this page provides the information they are looking for. If they don't think that the page provides the right content, they leave. Does it mean we should squeeze all of our content in the above-the-fold area? Absolutely not. Less content in above-the-fold area may encourage more exploration below the fold. But it only happens when the content in the above-the-fold area keeps the visitor interested. Here are a few practical tips for working with content. First, content prioritization is the key step in page design. Provide the most important information in the above-the-fold area. When choosing the content, consider user goals. Their information should be relevant to the goals users want to accomplish. The first two sentences are the most important because users will likely read them rather than scan them, so you need to ensure that they can create the context for users. Users should know what the page is all about after reading the sentences. Use font styling to attract attention to important content. Visual weight has a direct impact on user attention. Users rely on visual attributes such as large headlines and bolded text to identify important words. Make sure words you think are important are visually distinct from the rest of the text, so users can easily find them. Second, the illusion of completeness can negatively impact the scrolling behavior. This illusion happens when the visible content on the screen appears to be complete when in fact more information exists outside of the viewable area. Lack of visual indicators that invite visitors to scroll can be a huge problem. When it comes to above the fold area, a large part of the white space near to the bottom of this area can create the illusion of completeness. It's possible to motivate visitors to scroll down by providing visual cues, such as cutoff elements. For example, Dropbox uses a cutoff image. This simple design decision motivates visitors to scroll down to discover more information. And it works both for vertical and horizontal scrolling. Netflix makes the last visible item in the horizontal carousel appear incomplete. The right edge of the item seems out of sight, and this helps to communicate the continuation of options. Here are a few practical tips that will help you to avoid the illusion of completeness. Add visual cues such as cut-off text or images to tell people that there is content below the fold. Test your design with representative users to make sure that the content can be easily discoverable. If you like this video, please subscribe and click on the bell icon so you'll never miss a new video. Thank you!